two dollar veggies. This is something that I see a lot of my clients and even myself with chronic illness. Like people who don't have chronic illness, kind of really well intentioned, want it to have a finish line. Oh, you're you're not sick anymore. You don't. I'll always have ulcerative colitis. I don't have symptoms today, thankfully, but I've not overcome this illness. I will have it forever. And it impacts mm -hmm. everything in my life, the way I eat, where I travel, all sorts of things, right? Mm -hmm. Managing my stress, like all of that. And so it's something that we kind of, especially in the book and like, you know, this is part of the personal side of it, of like, even if we're not experiencing symptoms, these chronic illnesses are with us forever. Again, right. maybe cancer is a little different where like people are cancer free, but mm. <clears throat> things like autoimmune diseases, they don't ever go away. And mm -hmm. I think there's often this kind of, kind of very well intentioned, but like hopeful expectation of friends and family members of like, oh, you're gonna get through it. You're gonna get better. Oh, when you're feeling better, I have clients with like chronic fatigue or ME and they're like, there's no finish line here. Like this is my life now. And so I'm not going to get better than where I'm at right now. Like this is never going to not be a part of who I am. Mm. And you can see how for the person with the chronic illness, that's not only hard for them to accept, but now also trying to teach other people how to be and accepting manage their of that. expectations and all that. Yeah. Yeah. And the family and friends need to grieve this too, because yeah. their whole relationship with this person, how they see this person, like, you know, the box that they had put that person in has now changed. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. There's all these little nuances to like having chronic illness that, that come up. So yeah, I think that's, that's one that, like you say, it's things ebb and flow and there's flares and remissions definitely. And I think you're right. Like, there's kind of a bit of like a po like positive grief, if you would want to call that, of like, oh, mm -hmm. like I'm feeling better. But now, again, with change comes, okay, I'm letting go of this and I'm bringing in other things that are both good and difficult. Right. Um, yeah. That's a, those are really good points. Um, yeah, because I, I would, so the point about like, you know, family members or the the social supports of someone who's going through chronic illness of them you know the intention is good they want to they want but they they're focused on the finish line that's really interesting because i would imagine from a family member side of things they're just trying to they're trying to maintain hope perhaps yeah, or they're trying yeah. to maintain sort of this positive attitude towards it right but in yeah. some ways it's like that's interesting that it could destruct is not maybe not the right word but like as you said it, it may not it just may not be helpful it definitely and yeah like i say it's always coming from the purest intentions they yes. don't want to see the person with chronic illness suffering they want yeah. what are you going to do to get better why aren't you doing these things get better get better you know but it, then the person with the chronic illness now again not only is the chronic illness but feels like they're constantly disappointing their mm. friends and family or that in them accepting their illness, they're letting their friends and family down by being like, there is no finish line and I'm starting to be okay with that and just managing what I can. Where yeah. the family's like, no, you gotta do this and this and this. Because they're again, still over here, just, yeah. Yeah, they're not in the body and they're again, so well-intentioned, but you can see how that just really yeah. creates a lot more isolation for the person experiencing the illness and so.